With the uh, recent advancement in technology, such as using uh, GPS systems, we're really able to now get a, a good feel for how the uh, player's running load and their playing load affects them physically. Previously in a bygone era, um, this information wasn't readily available to us. Um, so the information that we would use is just what we, the coach would think was appropriate and what the athlete's feedback was given also. So you should be able to get it, but I'll just give you feedback during the drills. Yeah, let me know what I'm at. Yeah. So using this information, we're able to control the player's training load and look at ways of maximising their training. The units that you saw before that we've turned on, uh, they, they talk to the satellites. Um, and once they lock on to the satellites, uh, this receiver uh, reads their signals wirelessly and uh, it's connected to the, the computer. You know, my job's to sort of quantify exactly what they do and uh, make sure they don't do too much or, or too little with some guys as well. During the session, you've achieved 50% of what we think you need to be doing and then been able to top the athletes up post-session or throughout the week to make sure that they have appropriate training loads so that in the short term, but more so long term, that we're going to be developing an athlete that is uh, going to be able to perform to the levels that we want them to. Trent. We look at every main session like today, measure exactly what they do. In a game that uh, these boys run from 12 to 16 kilometres, whereas in training, at the moment, they're probably running four to six. We're able to uh, give them types of running protocols that will uh, improve speed, agility and also endurance. It is a beautiful day for footy here and if you haven't looked up in the sky there is a beautiful rainbow at the moment but now uh, back to us everyone meet my good friend Michael Howard from Griffith University. He is studying a PhD in infra infrastructure and Griffith University is now ranked in the top 5% of unis in the world. Now, uh, this stadium is magnificent. You know, your PhD is all about infrastructure. What's your impression? Well, I think it's amazing and I, th I think it's a, a great example of how a whole community can benefit. All these St Kilda supporters that have come up from uh, Victoria are participating in our tourism industry and they're spending a lot of money in our, in our town. It's great. Now, you are a mature age student. What was it like going back to uni at Griffith University? Oh, well, I, I initially thought I'd make a bit of a um, fool of myself, so I only took on a couple of subjects, but I found that um, being a mature age person gives you a lot of benefits and there's a lot of strengths and a lot of wisdom comes with maturity that makes it a lot easier to be a student than, um, I think, than being a young person. I did. I studied my degree at Griffith University 10 years ago and um, I'm actually considering going back to study again myself. So, uh, and tell us a bit more about your research. Uh, I'm studying uh, is re infrastructure finance. The OECD uh, believes that there's $2 trillion worth of infrastructure needed every year and, and because governments in the world don't have the money to cover it, they're looking at institutions like superannuation funds and they won't participate unless they realise or they know how it fits in with their, the rest of their portfolio. And so my research is, is, is filling a gap because there's very little research has been t um, completed on, on where infrastructure fits in with a, a large investment portfolio. Well, good luck with your PhD, Michael. But the most important question is, does a uni student, do they have time to come to the footy on a Saturday afternoon? Always, you have to, you have to um, it's good for the mind and good for the soul. Yes, and it's good for our team as well. Okay, thank you for your time sitting on the Griffith University Red couch today.